Welcome back to the Trent Arena at Kettering Fairmont High School today as the Division IV regional final here between the Rushi Raiders and the Jackson Center Tigers. Sorry, in lineups tonight, we'll start with Rushi. At guard, he's a 5'10 inch senior, number two, Zane Shappy. The other guard is 6 foot 1 inch junior, Hayden Quinter. Another guard at 6 foot 2 inch junior, number 13, Braden Monin. At four, a six foot three inch sophomore, and number 24, Braylon Cordonier. And finally, rounding out the starting five is at a forward position, a six foot senior. It is number 34, Xavier Flippo. Rushi is coached by Spencer Cordonier. He's done a fantastic job filling in, as uh, we know he's an interim head coach after the, the tragic loss of Coach Dave Borchers. Let's move on to Jackson Center as they come into this game 26 and one. And now their starting lineup at uh, guard, a six foot two inch senior, number four, Nolan Fark. The other guard, a five foot 10 inch senior, number 12, Jace Mullenauer. A senior uh, at forward, six foot two inch, uh, Grant Elker. Another senior, a six foot, number 24, Bryson Roberts. And finally, a six foot three inch senior, number 34, Camden Reese, will do a fantastic job bringing up the ball, controlling the court. And so now we have a packed crowd here at Ketter at Fairmont and uh, Trent Arena. And so these two teams match up tonight. They faced each other twice this season, splitting a pair. Rushi winning the first game, Jackson Center winning the second. Jackson Center, both Rushi sharing the Shelby County Athletic Conference Championship this year. And so now they'll match it up for an opportunity for a state berth. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and get it tipped off here, and Jackson Center is going to control it. That's Bryson Roberts doing a nice job. He gets the ball to Camden Reese, and he's going to set up the offense. Camden Reese over to Molenauer. Molenauer. He's got it over to Elkert. Elkert looking inside. He gets back to, to Roberts, Bryson Roberts, that is. Camden Reese takes the ball into the lane. Pump fakes back out to Elkert. Elkert with the triple try. Just a little long, and what a nice rebound by Bryson Roberts. He resets the offense. He gets it inside to Camden Reese. What a nice reverse layup for Camden Reese. He gets the Tigers on the first on the scoreboard tonight. The ultimate outdoor scoreboard. The Jackson Center Tigers take a two to nothing lead. Rushi, the Rushi Raiders, 13. Braden Monin with the ball. He get the ball over to Braylon Cordonier. Cordonier, okay, Quencher, Quencher. Back to Xavier Flippo, Flippo. Gets it over to Quinter. Quinter trying to set up the offense. Nice man-to-man -man defense by Jackson Center. It's Filippo trying to look inside, and Jackson Center fans like the defense, and now we're going to get a call on Jackson Center. Looks like they're going to catch that one on number 15, Grant Elkert. That's Elkert's first team foul, actually the first foul of the game tonight. And so Rushi's going to get the ball out of bounds here underneath the hoop. Rushi Raiders come into this game 20 and three. Trying to get that 21st victory of the season going to state and Jason, excuse me, Hayden Quinter almost traveled there but reset his feet. They're gonna reset the offense. It's Braden Monin. Monin looking inside but great Jackson center defense causes the turnover. So Rushi commits their first turnover of the night and that's going to leave Jackson Center with the ball. It's Camden Reese. Reese, kind of the center point of this offense. He's going to bring the ball down the floor. He's going to look inside to Molenauer. Molenauer kicks it out to Bryson Roberts. Roberts drives, left-handed shot in the lane, misses. Nice rebound by Hayden Quinter. He's going to push the ball up the floor. Quinter, jump shot in the lane. He's a little bit short. And a nice rebound by Nolan Fark. Fark, kind of the spark plug of this offense and defense here for Jackson Center. He's going to run the ball down. Set up the offense. They're going to get it to Camden Reese. Reese is the six foot three inch senior. Does a little bit of everything for the Jackson Center Tigers. Averages a little over five points a game. And now he drives the ball into the lane, kicks it back out to Bryson Roberts. Roberts. He's thought about it. He's looking for it. Gets it back to Reese. Reese, patient. Great defense by Rushi, not allowing. Jackson Center to get that opportunity. Almost a steal by Braden Monin. Another missed shot, but Monin comes down with the rebound. And boy, the Rushi fans wanted a, excuse me, the Jackson Center fans wanted to travel on Zine Shappy there. Almost 
Got called with the traveling foul. Shappy in the lane, but a nice almost turnover. Rushi maintains possession. Now we're going to have a triple try from Cordonier. It's a little long, and we're going to get a foul underneath. And it looks like they're going to tag that foul to Bryson Roberts. So that moves Jackson Center now to two team fouls. Bryson Roberts with one. We have a substitution into the game for Rushi. Number 23, Ben York's going to enter the game. Our officiating crew is going to set up here and, and have a word to talk and we're going to settle some things here. And now Rushi's going to have an opportunity to inbound the ball underneath the hoop. So it looks like they may have trying to set things up here. And there's Rushi. Nice play inside. It's a missed shot by Cordonier, but a nice rebound. And now we're going to get a foul on Rushi. Really nice box out by Jackson Center. We're going to get a push over the back. They're going to call that one on Braden Cordonier. That's his first team foul. It's going to be Rushi's second team foul. So Camden Reese, he's going to set things up. He's going to drive the ball down the lane. And boy, about knocks Elkert out with that pass. And we're going to get another foul on Rushi. Two in a row here right quickly. I believe they're going to get Hayden Quinter with that foul. So Rushi now moving the team fouls to three to two. We have a two to zero ball game, really, on this ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor for the structure Pergola X. Jackson Center trying to push the ball inside. That's Lucas Hartle. Hartle. Nice looking shot comes off the bench and Lucas Hartle gets the Tigers going on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. That pushes the lead to four to zero and they're going to get a blocking foul on Hartle. Monin's going to get the play. He's going to get the opportunity for the three point play. Braden Monin took the ball to the hole and officials are going to call Lucas Hartle with the foul, with a blocking foul. That's going to take Monin to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He's going to get the opportunity to make this a triple, and he does. So that moves the score to four to three on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Jackson Center on top of Rushi, regional final here at Kettering Fairmont. Hartle wide open, going to take the triple in and out. But a nice rebound by Zane Chappie, and Rushi's going to go ahead and set the ball up and reset the offense. Rushi looking inside at Shappy. Shappy out to Braden Monin. Monin over to Hayden Quinter. Quinter now to Braden Cordonier. Cordonier thought about it for a second. Benjamin York now with the ball. York just coming in off the bench, looks for the inside play, and he's going to reset things. Zane Shappy over to Cordonier. Cordonier trying to make something happen. Spin move on Camden Reese. Reese hung with him, and now. What great defense by Nolan Fark. Kind of the spark plug on the floor, but nice play inside by Hayden Quinter. Got the loose ball, and that now gives Rushi the 5-4 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Talked about this game earlier and how this game was back and forth the first time this season. Opening game of the year, Jackson Center actually dropped the first game to Rushi 43-42, to but the second time, Jackson Center bested the Raiders 65 to 53. So this game tonight will split the difference and will also give the opportunity for one of these teams at a berth to the state tournament next weekend. Camden Reese is going to reset the offense. Just three minutes to go here in the first quarter at Trent Arena. And Nolan Farks double pump miss, but what a great rebound by Reese. Reese got swatted, and Zane Chappie comes down with it. Zane Chappie. Moving the ball down the floor, takes it to the hole. Nice defense inside by Reed Platfoot. The six foot five inch sophomore does a nice job of staying up and down and changes the possession to Jackson Center. Jace Molinar with a triple try, just a little long, and Hayden Quinter comes down with the rebound. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Rushi's going to reset the offense. You can tell the nerves in the gym right now. 
Both teams playing a little nervous, a low scoring affair so far. Rushi on top of Jackson Center, five to four on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And a triple try by Benjamin York goes a little long and Jackson Center stays down with a long pass by Camden Reese looking for Reed Platfoot and he overshot him by about five feet. So that's going to be another turnover by the Tigers. That's going to give Rushi a possession on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. It's five to four. Rushi on top of Jackson Center with just about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Bringing the ball up the floor for Rushi is number 22, Vince Borchers comes in off the bench. Borchers doing a nice job this season, averaging just a little over three points a game, giving a little bit of a spark to the Raiders. Looking inside to Braden Cordonier. Braylon Cordonier doing a fantastic job pushing that Rushi Raider lead to three on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Camden Reese trying to set the offense here. Reese gets it over to Platfoot. Platfoot looking inside, gets it back. Out deep triple to Bryson Roberts. Roberts misses and a nice rebound by Felix Francis coming in off the bench, giving a little spark for the Raiders. This is Hayden Quinter. Quinter looking inside here. Pushing the ball around to Cordonier. Cordonier over to Borchers. Borchers drives baseline, kicks it over. And then almost a steal by Jackson Center, but Reed Platfoot goes off of his hands and Rushi's going to maintain possession. Just looking at some of these teams, just for Rushi alone, Hayden Quinter being a first team all league player, as well as on the Jackson Center side, Nolan Fark and Jace Molenauer, and then second team players for both teams, Braden, Braylon Cordonier and Zane Shappy for the Raiders and for the Tigers, Camden Reese. Cordonier gets the tick bucket to go, and now Rushi really pushing this lead five to four on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Rushi in control with just under one minute to go here in the first quarter at Trent Arena. Shot by Platfoot misses. Rushi comes down with a rebound. That's Felix Francis. A couple nice rebounds here for Felix Francis. And Rushi with 45 seconds to go here. He's going to hold on to the ball and call a maybe a final attempt here to get the final shot. It's Vince Borchers gets it over to Quinter. Quinter with 30 seconds here to go. Getting the instructions from Coach Spencer Cordonier. Cordonier barking out instructions, and now just under 20 seconds to go. On the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, nine to four, Rushi on top of Jackson Center. We're gonna get a screen up top by Bork Cordonier. Cordonier gets the pass, he's gonna drive to the lane, pump fakes, tries to spin, gets it back to Quinter. Triple try off the backboard, misses, and that's gonna conclude the first quarter as the Rushi Raiders hold on to a nine to four lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. We'll come back here with second quarter action in just a few moments. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back here to Trent Arena as the Rushi Raiders are holding on to a nine to four lead over the Jackson Center Tigers. John Zerbe here with Darren Gilbert and Jackson Center trying to get something going here. Now down five, Camden Reese kicked it over to almost Nolan Fark gets the steal by Rushi and Rushi now controls. That's Hayden Quinter. Quinter moving the ball up the floor. Well, we knew coming into this contest that both teams play exceptionally well defensively and this being round three, so to speak, they split during the regular season. So. It's going to be a defensive battle. So Vince Borchers is going to take the ball. Borchers coming off the bench, doing a really nice job controlling this offense. Rushi holding on to a 9-4 lead and almost a steal by Camden Reese. Gilly, you know, we've, we've seen these regional finals. These teams score, you know, more than nine points a quarter. You can kind of see the tension by both teams. Yeah, and you know what? And they're going to earn everything they get. Both teams <laughs> are going to have to earn their baskets. So we're going to get a foul on Jackson Center. That's going to be their fourth team foul. 
They're going to call that one on Jace Mullenauer. Thankfully, it's his first. Mullenauer, an all-league player. Really good player. You know, that was one of the keys that, you know, uh, Coach Cordonier was really focusing on is they got to make sure they contain him and stop the dribble penetration because Rushi is really good at it, and so is Jackson Center. So both teams resemble themselves. They play exceptionally hard, and, you know, both teams have depth. Grant Elkert, great defense by the Tigers. He ties up Rushi. They're going to get a jump ball. Rushi's going to maintain possession. Now we've got Quinter looking inside. He's got the ball to Felix Francis. Francis kicks it back out, and now it's Braden Monin. Monin over to Cordonier. Cordonier looking inside to Francis. The Cordonier, almost a miscommunication there, but Hayden yeah. Quinter comes pretty, up with the basketball. Pretty good hands right there, huh? <laughs> a pretty good heads up play. And Cordonier, deep triple try, just a little short. Rebound inside. Nice rebound inside by Braden Monin, but we're going to get a foul. On Monin, it's no, going to go to Jackson Center. Out of, it was actually out of bounds. Okay. He stepped out of bounds. Okay, good, good eyes, Gilly. Coach Scott Elkert. Yeah, he wanted the over. He there's no such thing as an over the back call, but he wanted <laughs> some contact right there. And tell you what, just early on, the officials are letting them play. Yes, they sure are. Camden Reese, kind of the quarterback of this offense, he gets the ball. Over to Bryson Roberts. Roberts back to Reese. Reese to Elkert. Elkert with the deep triple just off the rim. And a nice rebound by Francis. Good look right there by Elkert, top of the key. Well, and I think Jackson Center is playing a little tight. You can see they've missed some shots early tonight. Getting open looks, just missing their shots. Those will soon fall. And what a nice play by Hayden Quinter. And, and that's exactly what he does. He wants to go north and south and get to the rim. And he did right there with a nice little quick crossover. So Bryson Roberts has the ball. It's 11 to four. The Rushi Raiders on top of the Jackson Center Tigers on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Rushi pushing their lead to seven. Jackson Center trying to get some kind of offense going. In the corner, Camden Reese, the point guard of this offense, kicks it out to Roberts. Roberts with the triple try. Just a little long. Rebound. Loose ball. Nice rebound by Elkert. Elkert. He's going to try to get the ball out of bounds, but it looks like we're going to be out of bounds on Jackson Center. No, actually, they called get a timeout. timeout. Yeah, they got a 30 second. Coach Elk called a 30. So they have a 30, and guess what? We're going to have a 30 as well. It's Rushi 11, Jackson Center 4 on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. It's 11 to four, Rushi on top of Jackson Center on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. It's time to spring to life with WSN and TV44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. Please support us at WOSN and TV44. Inbound pass, almost intercepted by the Rushi Raiders, but Nolan Fark does a nice job of maintaining sure possession. Sure did. So Camden Reese trying to make something happen. Nolan Fark now with the ball. Great defense by the Rushi Raiders. And they're finally going to come down with the rebound. It's Hayden Quinter going to take the ball to the hole. And Hayden Quinter pushes this lead to nine. Again, that's what he does best at north and south and plays exceptionally hard. And the rest of the team feed off his energy. So Hayden Quinter doing a heck of a job averaging almost 13 points a game. He's got six already, and we've got a foul by Rushi, which is their fourth team foul. But boy, you can feel the energy here in the gym, Gilly, just by the Rushi Raiders as well. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, it's a packed facility here. Get a bucket right here. Jackson's, you know, they're not gonna go away. They're gonna make a run. It is, it's just gonna be win. So. Jackson Center trying to get something going here. This is Bryson Roberts, just a little bit long, but what a nice re rebound by Lucas Hartle inside to Canman Reese. And boy, the Tigers just can't find the bottom yeah, of the net. They can't find the bottom right now. They're getting high quality shots. Nice job there by Reese, sticking his nose in there, drawing the charge. Well, Camden Reese gives a much needed momentum change for the Tigers. You know, the fans have been kind of half standing, half sitting, not sure what to do, and now they're on their feet cheering. 
Yeah, I'm trying to see who who they call that on court on here. Appears to be number 20. What was it? 24. I believe so. That's okay. his first team foul. That'll be Rushi's fifth. And now that lead, that 13 to four lead by the Rushi Raiders on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, they just need a little run right here. A couple of buckets and trim into this thing. They don't need to get it all back at once. Nice hands. I think that was York. Yes, Ben York coming in the game, coming off the bench, really giving a nice spark for the Rushi Raiders, especially defensively tonight. So Jace Molenauer, he's gonna bring the ball up the floor here, and what a nice steal. Sure was, York with the double team. As Soon as he turned his back on the dribble, York you know, dug down and got his hands on it, swiped it. So Cordonier is gonna get to Shappy. Shappy looking inside, now it's back to Cordonier. Cordonier kicks it out to Br Braden Monin. Monin gets it to Shappy. Shappy almost lost it, but Cordonier is gonna keep it. Good defense by Jackson Center. So Quinter trying to make something happen here. He takes Camden Reese one on one, but he's gonna miss. Nice job by Reed Platfoot, but they're gonna get him with a blocking foul. Now that's just effort right there. Shappy saw the basketball loose on the floor, that 50-50 ball. And he got it, decided to go to the rim, and Blackfoot just didn't quite get his feet set there. He tried to take the charge, but he, he just wasn't quite there. So that will send Zane Shappy to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He nails the first one. Lee's famous recipe chicken in Piqua and Sydney. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken. Shappy will take the second opportunity here to push that lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard to 11. Yeah, that's two big free throws for that young man only coming in at 60%. So Camden Reese with a nine point deficit. If you're Jackson Center, you're stunned by the aggressive defense by the Rushi Raiders and they get another steal. That's Hayden Quinter. Quinter gonna take the ball the length of the floor. Nice what hands. a great play by Nolan Fark. And a nice pass to Molenauer. Molenauer inside. And that one might be what they just need to get the motor started. It's not that they're not playing hard, they're just, they're not finishing plays, so to speak. And big finish there. So Molenauer is gonna get the opportunity now at the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. I like the hustle by Lucas Hartle. He's come off the bench tonight and just really given a Packed the punch for the Tigers, and Molenauer has the opportunity to cut this lead to eight, and he does. Yeah, that foul was on Shappy, his first. 15 to, to seven on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Hayden Quinter. Over to Ben York. York back to Quinter. Quinter driving into the lane, almost lost it. What great defense by Nolan Fark. He gets it back and now they're gonna get a foul on Fark. Yeah, they got him the second time. The first one was pretty clean. I think the second was more or less on the body. So that's gonna send Hayden Quinter back to the free throw line, the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. And with just under three minutes to go here in the first half, the Rushi Raiders looking to extend their lead. He misses the first of two, but he's gonna get a second opportunity here. Yeah, 67% from the charity strike, just under 13 points a game. Like I said earlier, as he goes, it appears the rest of the basketball team does. So Quinter misses both. And now we're gonna have a almost an out of bounds foul there, but they take possession, so Jackson Center is gonna maintain possession. Yeah, very lucky right there because there was a missed box out on that free throw lane situation that uh, Jackson Center's going to get the basketball. So Lucas Hartle gets it to Nolan Fark. Fark almost loses it, but he kicks it to the corner. Reed Platfoot thought about the triple. He's going to get it back in the on the baseline. Can't quite get hanging the ball. So oh, Lucas pretty move. Can. Oh, nice block! Wow. And now you're really starting to feel the energy in here, Gilly. <laughs> yeah, both sides. You got orange on one side and blue on the other. <laughs> so that will send Lucas Heitkamp to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. 
And you know, Jackson Center has not really shot many free throws tonight, Darren. One of the things they might need to do is take the ball to the hole more and get some opportunities here to make some points. Well, you know what? They, they've been to the line. They're a good free throw shooting team like you just mentioned, 75% on the season. They've attempted 58 more free throws, made 213 versus their opponents, 142. And one of the things I notice of, of watching them a few times this year is great rebounding offensively, typically by Jackson Center, but they just really haven't had a chance to get second those second chance opportunities tonight because Rushi is crashing the boards. Rushi does a really, both teams are very fundamentally sound at the defensive end of the floor. So Quinter gets the ball in the corner to Zane Shappy. Shappy. Yeah, big shot by Mr. Shappy. And that pushes the lead to 10 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Just under two minutes to go. Rushi in control of this game. Reed Platfoot kicks it out to Heitkamp. Heitkamp for the triple, almost goes in, but Nolan Fart, that big second rebound. chance. That's a big bucket there for the Tigers. And all of a sudden, you know, you kind of feel like this game is, you know, slipping away. And like you said, Darren, Jackson Center wasn't done. No, they're not done. Neither team's done. Each team's going to make a run here in these last couple quarters. So Shappy in the lane, and Zane Shappy feeling it. Really nice job getting it to his right strong hand, getting it to that elbow, the left elbow, and knocking down that 15-footer. 20 to 10, Rushi on top of Jackson Center. Nolan Fark, nice spin move, missed the shot in the lane. Another opportunity inside by Hartle. Hartle misses as well, a nice rebound by Braylon Cordonier. Tough break there. Excellent offensive rebound, like you said, by Hartle. He just couldn't finish. So Rushi with a 10-point lead with under 45 seconds to go. They're just going to stay and be content with one oh, final yeah. shot there. Yeah, they, they don't want to give Jackson another opportunity. You know, satisfied right now at 10. Maybe they can get it to, to uh, 12 or maybe draw a foul and get a free throw or something out of it. Well, Rushi already in the bonus. Well, actually, on the next uh, foul will be in the bonus. And so, like you said, maybe a, an attempt to take the ball to the hole, but it looks like they're going to be content with this final shot here. Hayden Quinter with just about 10 seconds to go here. He's going to kick it to the corner inside, back to Quinter. Quinter underneath the hole. He's going to take it. Miss. Rebound on the floor. Nice hustle by sure Jackson was. Center. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. Yeah, I think that. That's a new rule this year. You got to be make sure you go for the basketball. And in that situation, the young man fell on top. So that is in the rules. What great hustle by Lucas Heitkamp, laying out, getting on the floor. And here's the interesting thing, Darren, with under one second to go, that is going to put Jackson Center to the free throw line. Free throw line with the clock stop. Yeah. You know, not a bad effort by you know, Rushi right there. They got it where they wanted. Just a better defensive play. And Height can't misses, and that's going to take us to the end of the first half. Boy, it's been a good one. It's been a loud one. It's Shelby County Athletic League, and I'll tell you what, it's been a good game so far. It's the Rushi Raiders 20 and the Jackson Center Tigers 10 on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. You're watching high school basketball right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Trent Arena as we get into third quarter action with the Rushi Raiders on top of the Jackson Center Tigers, 20 to 10 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Darren, we talked about those keys before the game. What are some things that are going to have to happen, maybe some adjustments this half for either team to, to get out of here with a win? I don't think Jackson Center has to go away from their game plan. You know, they had really good looks in the first half, just couldn't knock them down. And that's a tribute to Rushi, or Rushi, excuse me, you know, limiting their opportunities and rebounding the ball. If you're Rushi, you just got to continue. You know, you know the run from Jackson Center is going to come and continue to do things you've been doing. But I think it's going to be a great second half by both these teams. 
Well, Jackson Center, I would say, probably played a rough first half, and they're only down 10. But now we're going to get a jump ball early and a turnover, in a sense, for Jackson Center. Rushi's going to maintain possession. But if you're Jackson Center, you know, you've just been really cold, only 10 points. Uh, and the, you've been averaging over 50 points a game. Right. It's the little things like right there, just an unfortunate opportunity to get the basketball and lose your balance and get into a held ball position and the ball went to Rushi. One of the things about Jackson Center, they've been a really strong third quarter team, averaging 14 points a game in the third quarter. I know a couple weeks ago against Fort Lormie, they had a very strong third quarter. So you're going to see Jackson Center try to get out here and maybe cut into this lead a little bit, but Rushi doing a nice job of controlling the basketball. Nice block. Sure was. By Bryson Roberts. Good job just walling up, not leaving his feet, playing vertical. So Jace Molenauer. Molenauer has been kind of quiet, and he's going to draw the foul. Looks like they're going to get that one on Braden Monin. Actually, I think they got 24. They did. Correction. That is Braylon Cordonier. That's his second. So Camden Reese now taking the ball inside and great defense by Rushi. And now we're going to get a foul. It was a nice defense by Felix Francis, who's getting some early opportunities here in the third quarter, getting that start here in the third quarter. And now. Well, and I think part of the reason, you know, John, is because of his length. Yeah. You know, and he is a really good shot blocker and anticipates things very well. And we just saw that right now blocking this last possession, blocking Reese. And then I think, who'd they get? Elkert on the foul? They sure did. It's his first team foul. It ties both team fouls up at one. Felix Francis talked about his length a little bit ago, Gilly. Six foot five inch guard. Yeah, look at, I mean, look at his arms. I mean, he's got, he's got length. Came off the bench in the first half and really provided a nice spark for the Raiders and getting a start here in the second half. It's Braden Monin. Monin looking inside. He's in the paint. He's going to kick it back out. They're going to reset things. That's Cord Braylon Cordonier over back to Hayden Quinter. Quinter going to reset things. Quinter guarded by Nolan Fark. We've got a first teamer against a first teamer. Good job there by Jackson Center, keeping the basketball out of the box. Zane Chappie over to Braylon Cordonier. Cordonier getting a screen. Any screen, Jackson Center satisfied with switching. So Quinter thought about the triple for just a second over to Braden Monin. Monin setting things up. Rushi doing a very good job of being patient. Yeah, I've watched him play an 84-foot game and then you know, watching him play this here. He's got confidence in his ball handlers and the five on the floor to execute. As soon as I say that, they create a turnover. Jackson Center, great defense, especially by Grant Elker causing that turnover. Yeah, they tried to go to the length right there and get it inside and unfortunately turned the basketball over. So Camden Reese, Reese only two points tonight. Not a big score, but really the the quarterback of this offense has been kind of quiet. Let's see if he gets a little bit more involved here. That's Jace Mullenauer looks inside, and boy, he just overshot Grant Elker just a little bit. Yeah, this is where they can't panic. Talking about the Tigers, taking one possession at a time. You know, that's one right there, but that's a tough pass to make a tough angle. And you know, Coach Elker was a little disappointed in that pass right there. So we're almost to three minutes here in the third quarter and no score so far. It's 20 to 10, Rushi on top of Jackson Center on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Quinter kicks it out to Zane Chappie. Chappie, another triple try, misses. What a nice rebound by Ben York. He misses. And we've got a ball on the floor, but they're going to be out of bounds. Camden Reese came down with it, but his foot was out of bounds. Chappie's down on the floor. I'm not sure what it is. He asked for somebody to come in. He took one. Appears to be holding his head a little bit. I thought there was really good sportsmanship by Bryson Roberts. He walked over and asked him if he was doing okay, and he yeah. kind of simulated, hey, I got hit in the head, and now they're going to get him a sub. Yep, they're going to check him out. 
Jackson Center is also going to bring in Reed Platfoot. Platfoot, six foot five inch, doing a great job. Nice deny by Camden Reese, but it's going to stay with the Rushi Raiders. Now, like I said, it's it's all going to come down to the little things because both teams know their sets. Almost a steal by by Jackson Centers, but Vince Borchers kept it under control, and now. The ball is to Monin. Monin looking, a great pass inside, but a miss by Borchers. And now we're going to get an out-of-bounds call, and the ball is going to go to Jackson Center. Yeah, Jackson Center's got to be strong with the basketball. They were fortunate right there. They almost got it stripped from them for an easy bucket. So Camden Reese, Reese, the six foot three inch senior, brings the ball up the floor. He gets it to Jace Molinauer. Molinauer, the 5'10 senior, over to Nolan Fart. Fark takes the ball to the lane, up and almost in, but he's going to draw a foul. Good job by the senior right there. First team all-conference. A little under 11 points a game. Going to step to the charity stripe, 67%. So Jace Molenauer, he's going to get his opportunity at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. His first one is up, and it's good. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and Sydney. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. That's Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And Darren, when you're struggling to shoot from the outside, how important is it to try to get to the to the free throw line? You gotta get to the charity stripe. There's a couple advantages there. You're putting your teammates in a better position and creating foul situations on the opposition. And number two, the clock stops. And when you're down, Having that clock stopped is huge. It's like a timeout. So having the clock stop, shorten the lead to eight on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. It's Rushi hanging on to a 20 to 12 lead over Jackson Center. Rushi not in any hurry at all. They're going to set things up with Braden Monin. They're going to get the, the orders from Coach Spencer Cordonier. They're going to reset things up now. It's Vince Borchers. Eight point lead, you can be patient. <coughs> Braylon Cordani are going to take the ball to the lane, and yes, they're going to get him with the push. They got him with the right shoulder, creating space. If he'd have kept his shoulders, you know, square to the defender, he'd have been all right, but he leaned to create space with the right shoulder. That's big because that's his third. Third personal foul on Cordania, and you got to give some credit to Camden Reese there. What a great job of moving his feet and being in great position to draw that uh, charging foul. Molenauer over to Fark. Fark. Running the offense, trying to get something going. It's Lucas Hartle. Hartle kicks it out to Reese. Reese, the triple try just a little bit short. And Hayden Quinter is going to come out with the rebound. Trying to push the ball up the floor. Gets the ball to Ben York, and we're going to get a foul on the Tigers. I think they got Reese across the arm. Hey, that's a great look by the Tigers, though. You got an open three at the top of the key. That thing goes down. You know, it cuts it under a two-possession game. So Ben York, he's going to get his opportunity to go to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. He hits the first of two. That'll push the lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard to 21 to 12. Not a bad free throw shooter, 83% for the young man. <laughs> I would take that percentage. That's that's pretty dang good. York, second opportunity here, drills it. So Ben York giving some life to these Rushi Raiders, and now they push that lead back to 10 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Jackson Center just really can't get anything going offensively. Nolan Fark with the ball. He's going to try to draw drive the lane, puts a shot up, misses, but boy, they're going to get a foul, and the Rushi Raider fans, they're questioning that foul, Gilly. I think Vince Borchers, I believe. Yeah. He gets his money's worth. I mean, he, he plays exceptionally hard, and he has that defensive prowess to his game, and he got just a little bit too much arm. But credit for it, he's trying to create something to get his team going. You know, Molinauer is struggling right now to get his touches. Somebody, they got, you know, all these three first and second teamers. One of them's got to step up. So I think he's trying. Yeah, so Fark hits two out of two from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. 
That again dwindles the lead to eight, 22 to 14 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Braden Monin, and they're going to get another charge on Rushi. Yeah, that's that. There, there's no doubt about that. That was created with the shoulder to create space. And I think you've said it a couple times, Gilly. When you see that shoulder go forward, there's really no call that the official can make other than a charge. Right. And you know, there was no flop there. There was contact made. You know, when you dip the shoulder and you create that space, it's the same thing as pushing off with your forearm. Nice defensive play there by Jackson Center. So Camden Reese going to take the ball the length of the floor. Camden Reese cuts the lead to six, 22-16. Rushi hanging on to the lead over Jackson Center on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And now you see some intensity here inside this gym, especially by the Jackson Center Tigers defensively. Nice spin move inside, missed shot by Hayden Quinter, and a rebound comes down to the Tigers. Yeah, that length right there changed that shot for Quinter. Nice give and go. Lucas Hartle takes the ball to the rim, but Ben York and Vince Borchers make a nice play, but we're going to get a timeout by Rushi. And boy, we've seen a back and forth here pretty quickly, and it's getting exciting. We're going to take a timeout, too. It's 22 to 16 on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. The Rushi Raiders on top of the Jackson Center Tigers. You're watching high school basketball regional final action on WOSN. Welcome back to Kettering Fairmont Trent Arena. What a beautiful facility we're at tonight for the regional division four regional final. It's the Rushi Raiders, two-seated Rushi Raiders, hanging on to a slim 22 to 16 lead over the Jackson Center Tigers. My name's John Zerby. My partner tonight, Darren Gilbert. Darren, you just said it a few moments ago off air. This game is far from over with. Far from over, like I said, it's gonna be you know, the peaks and valleys, and that's going to be created from the defense of both teams. And both teams are, you know, is going to have some runs. And right now it appears Jackson Center, you know, is seeing a little bit of a run. I think Coach Cordonier took that out to just settle his troops down a little bit. Well, you could see Jackson Center kind of getting a little bit of momentum in that timeout. Very smart because now things are settled once again. Rushi under control, getting back into their offense. And their offense led by Hayden Quinter. Quinter, six foot one inch junior. It's the ball over to Zane Shappy. Shappy's had a big night tonight. Shappy's doing some, some really good stuff, averaging a little bit over six points a game. In the corner. That was Vince Borchers. Borchers misses. Yes, yeah, Quinter. Uh, there's Quinter on the glass. Hayden Quinter, he's just been a little bit everywhere tonight. Hustling, hustling, and hustling. Just under four rebounds a game. And that pushes the lead back to eight on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Rushi hanging on to this eight point lead. And a turnover inside the lane. That's Ben York getting the steal. So Rushi resetting the offense. Vince Borchers gonna get it back over to Ben York. York over to Zane Shappy. Shappy pulling the ball out. Porch Cordonier calling out what play he wants. He gets it back to Borchers. And Rushi being really patient at this point. He's almost running like a four corner that Dean Smith used to run many, many years ago, except he's got Francis down on the box. He's trying to see if he can get a cheapie, just like that. And he did, wow, Vince Borchers with the lane created, takes a baseline and pushes the lead back to 10. The Rushi Raiders on top of Jackson Center on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. And now Jackson Center with 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter needs points quickly. Nolan Fark back to Camden Reese. Reese tries to get the ball to Molenauer. Molenauer being smothered by Felix Francis. Played an outstanding defensive game tonight on Molenauer. Yes, yes he has. They all have so far. There's a big block. Great rebound by Camden Reese, and he gets it over to Molenauer for some much needed points by Jackson Center. And a final shot is not going to get a call. That's Hayden Quinter. A no call by the officials, and that's going to take us to the end of three. It's Jackson Center 
just down by eight points. They cut the lead by two, but it's the Rushi Raiders hanging on to the eight-point lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. 26 to 18, Rushi on top of Jackson Center. We'll be back for our final quarter, and who will see this opportunity to make it to the state tournament? It's high school basketball right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Trent Arena here at Kettering Fairmont, and we are in the final quarter of basketball action. It's the Rushi Raiders on top of the Jackson Center Tigers, 26 to 18, and Darren Gilbert, boy, it's gonna come down to this final quarter. Yeah, you know, Jackson Center's gotta get a little run. Now's the time. Jace Mullenauer immediately comes back with the triple and pushes that lead down to five. Darren Gilbert called it. They're gonna have to get back in the game, and they are immediately. There's and another charge with the lean with the shoulder. What a great job by Camden Reese. He's been everywhere tonight, defensively especially. Hasn't been able to get his offensive game going, but defensively has been just the man taking charge after charge. And now that'll give Jackson Center possession with only a five-point deficit on the ultimate you, outdoor scoreboard. You know, and the kid does so much. You know, taking care of the basketball, he leads the team in assist with 93, which is about 3.7 a game. And we saw that right there at the end of the third quarter on that offensive rebound and that kick to Mullenauer down. I think it was Mullenauer yeah. down there in the corner. And so Jackson Center now is going to get possession. Their fans are on their feet. For the first time in a little while, there's some energy, some excitement on this Jackson Center side. So Camden Reese, he's going to try to cut that lead to even lower than five. Clapping for the ball boy, too, cleaning up the wet spot. <laughs> Got to love it. Camden Reese going to take the ball to the hole, lays it up, misses. Nice rebound by Braden Monin. Monin going to take the ball up the floor to Shappy. Shappy kicks it over to York. York tries to go baseline, but great defense by Jace Molenauer. Molenauer, excuse me, Hayden Quinter, guarded by Reed Platfoot. We're going to get a screen by Felix Francis. Quinter going to try, misses, retains possession, and there he is. Camden Reese, Gilly. <laughs> I mean, he's not, the thing is, it looks like he's flopping. He's not flopping. He's vertical, and he's letting contact come to him. And you can look at him right now. Those things aren't, uh, how do I want to say it? Those things are aggressive and they hurt. <laughs> what a turn of events. The Rushi Raiders not too happy. The Jackson Center Tigers feeling the excitement. And we're going to come back here with just seven minutes to go. It's on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Rushi 26, Jackson Center 21. We'll be back in just a few minutes on WSN. Welcome back to Kettering Fairmont High School at Trent Arena as the Jackson Center Tigers maintain possession, cutting that lead to five with seven minutes to go. Lots of basketball here to go in the regional final, Division Four. Well, we just talked about Reese and his ability to take charges. He's had eight coming into tonight. I feel like he's had eight here tonight Whoa. alone. I, I, I'd say for sure he's had four. Those are unofficial. I was unofficial. say half of that, yeah. But he just does such a great job of controlling his body and playing defense with his feet. So Nolan Fart gets the ball back to Reese. Reese to Fark, Fark to Molenauer. Molenauer gonna drive the lane, gonna try the shot, misses, but follows his shot, misses once again. And Rushi coming down with the rebound. That's Hayden Quinter. What a great, great look right there. Jackson Center just could not add two cracks at it. But that third one, Rushi got in there defensively and rebounded. So Felix Francis kicks it over in the corner, in the corner. It's Braden Monin, and Braden Monin's going to get finally a call on Jackson Center. They're going to get Lucas Hartle, and the Rushi fans like that call. Uh, he just didn't quite get there with his feet. Used his upper body. Got to get the feet square. 
Not a bad foul, though, if you're Jackson center. So Rushi maintains possession here. They're going to go ahead and set things back up. It's Braden Monin. Monin setting up the offense. This is Benjamin York. York drives the lane, turns and gets it over to Zane Shappy. Shappy to Felix Francis. Francis to Braden Monin. Monin back to Francis. Looking inside, but they're going to turn the ball over. And yeah. even though Jackson Center has struggled to score, I mean, so is Rushi, really. Jackson Center's ability in the interior to take those charges has Rushi on their heels a little bit, so to speak, on being afraid to take the basketball to the basket or squaring up trying to play power basketball down on the blocks. So Jackson Center with Camden Reese trying to set up this motion offense here. You got Bryson Roberts trying to take the ball a whole nice spin move, almost a spin move, backs his way in and just really good defense. And they're going to say it's off of Jackson Center. Yeah, that's one the dribble drive. He should have kicked it to the corner when he had the opportunity. He got down there, but the double team came and it was too late. And it bounced off his knee out of bounds. So Rushi now brings the ball up the floor. It's Zane Shappy, Shappy over to Quinter, Hayden Quinter. Quinter over back to Shappy, came from Felix Francis. Quinter gonna get the opportunity here. It's a missed shot by Braden Moan and a nice rebound by Nolan Fart. Good job on the box out, giving him one and done. Nice look inside, we're gonna get a timeout from Coach Scott Elker. The ball was to Grant Elker, we thought it was gonna be Maybe a traveling call or, or something, but he went ahead and got the timeout first, so we're going to take a timeout here. It's Rushi 26, Jackson Center 21, and the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back here at Trent Arena, it's the Rushi Raiders holding on to a five-point lead over the Jackson Center Tigers. And Darren, we've seen four quarters of basketball action. Boy, it's been physical. You see that score and you think, this hasn't been a very good game, but it's been an exciting up and down it's game. It's been an exciting up and down game. I know people like points, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with two good defensive teams doing battle. Well, you that's always, exactly what we're seeing tonight. Yeah, you always hear defense win championships. I know it's cliche, but two great defensive teams. And boy, there's some offense that's much needed by Bryson Roberts. Really good timeout there by Jackson Center getting them into an offensive set with a high percentage shot. That's exactly what they got. A 15 footer and they knocked it in. They cut it to one possession. So Rushi hanging on to the three point lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Jackson center down 10 at one point going into halftime and down eight going into the fourth quarter, but they've cut that lead to three. And now stepping up the defense, the Tiger fans on their feet. We see some really good deep pressure defense by Camden Reese and Jace Molenauer. Rushi's going to go ahead and reset things with Hayden Quinter. Quinter getting a screen from Braylon Cordonier. He takes the screen. He tries to take it one-on-one -on -one against Fark. Nolan Fark playing great defense. Miss, but what a good rebound by Hayden Quinter. Misses once again. The ball is loose. Rushi comes down with it. Now we're going to get a foul. Man, he is just relentless at both ends of the floor. Mr. Quinter. You know, he's the quarterback of this team. And like I said earlier in the game, everybody else feeds off of him. You know, he had two point blank shots there. Jackson Center did a good job, did everything right except rebound the ball. And that third effort by Quinter is going to get him two free throws. So Hayden Quinter is going to get this opportunity at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. He misses the first of two. These are big free throws in this situation, Darren. Yeah, he was awful quick on that release right there. He he didn't hesitate. It's almost like he shot it just a little bit too quick. Quinter's going to get this second opportunity here. Ball is up and it's short, and what a good possession for Jackson Center. Yeah, this place in orange is going to erupt if they get a bucket here, especially if it's a three. So Camden Reese going to try to take the ball to the hole himself. Misses. What a nice rebound by Lucas Hartle, but he misses the follow-up. Oh. 
I feel like there's a cap on the rim tonight for Jackson Center. They've just tried and tried and tried second chance opportunities and just can't get the ball to fall. Yeah, it's the point blank ones right now that they cannot get the finish. So Hayden Quinter almost turned the ball over. They're going to call that out of bounds on Camden Reese. So Rushi maintains possession almost. Well, we have about three minutes to go here on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard with Rushi hanging on to a slim three-point lead. Quinter looking inside. He gets it to Felix Francis. Francis is going to get it over to Zane Chappie. Chappie back to Braden Moan, and they're going to set things up here. Yeah, we're just under three minutes to go, partner. Braylon Cordonier gets it to Francis. Great defense. We're going to get a foul on Bryson Roberts. It looked like he had the hand on the ball, but maybe slapped a little too much there at the end. Yeah, this is where you got to keep your head and stay composed. Still a common foul. You don't want to show your emotion to the officials. Only the fifth team foul by Jackson Center, so that ball will remain on the floor and they'll have to inbound the basketball. Yeah, Jackson Center's in the bonus. So Rushi controlling the basketball here, trying to get something going, being very patient on offense here. They're holding on to a slim three-point lead, but they're being extremely patient. At what point, Darren, do you decide as your Jackson Center to, to begin fouling and, and making Rushi go to the free throw line? Well, it, all, it ultimately is going to come down to, you know, it's both league schools, they're going to know who to foul. That's where your sure. assistant coaches come into play. Big possession by Jackson Center. They got the rebound. They get the, the ball turned over here. We're going to keep it here with just two minutes to go. And now Jackson Center going to get that timeout. I mean, that, that that's a great you know point. This is where your assistant coaches play a huge part in your program. They're both being, you know, league schools. They're going to know who to foul. So that's that's probably one of the things that Coach Elkert, Coach Meyer, and the rest of the staff is discussing. I'm sure one coach over there has that stuff in the scouting report if it comes down to crunch time. Same thing with Rushi. They know on Jackson Center who to put charity strike. So Rushi hanging on to a three-point lead. Jackson Center gets the timeout. They have possession and only a three-point lead for the Raiders. If you're the Raiders now, what are you talking about in that huddle? Well, you don't want to give Mullenauer an opportunity to hit a three, but you also got to be smart enough to know that you don't want to file them and put the put somebody at the charity stripe with the clock stop. This is where you got to sit down and play. You know, if, I, if I'm Coach Elkert, he's not going to play for a three right now. There's too much time left in the game. 211 is an awful lot of time. You want to get a high percentage shot, you know, whether it be Reese or Mullenauer or Fark. Jackson Center, a 75% shooting team from the free throw line. Rushi, a 70%. So both teams, pretty good free throw shooters. And that's going to put us under two minutes. We've got almost everybody on the Jackson center side on their feet. Huh. Jace Mulliner with the triple try. <laughs> Guess what? I was wrong. They did, try, <laughs> they did try for the three in the tie. So Rushi comes down with a great rebound. And I think there was even a hand on the ball. The ball was a little long. And so now Zane Chappie is going to go ahead and reset the offense. And we're under two minutes here. Under two minutes. Rushi hanging on to a three-point lead. And we're going to get Camden Reese up top with a foul. Yeah, Mr. Quinter, he's the second half. I mean, there's been a lot of contact. And so that is still team, that is still six team fouls for Jackson Center. The ball's still going to be on the floor, so they're going to put one more, they need one more team foul before they can put Rushi to the foul line to shoot one in the bonus. So Rushi going to set that offense once again. It's Ben York. York looking inside to Cordonier. Cordonier back out. To, to Monin, Monin. Over to Shappy. Shappy back to Monin. Monin going to drive the lane. He's going to take it to the hole. He's a little short, and it's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Rushi. Might have a foul on a push. Looks like Mark Freilich is going to get Jackson center underneath, and it looks like it's going to be on Rushi, Darren. I think they got Cordonier with the push. 
And that's Cordonye, Braylon Cordonye's fifth foul, Darren Gilbert. What does that's, that do? That, that's a big one. You know, coach's son, uh, leader on the team, scorer, decent defender. It's going to come down to your bench now. So that's going to take Lucas Hartle to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And I know you're a 75% shooting team right now, but you need about 100%. Yeah, and he's, he's only attempted five coming into tonight's basketball game. Hartle. Looked like he shot 200 on the year, though, <laughs> didn't he? Looked really good on that release. Ice in the veins from Lucas Hartle, cutting that lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard to two. Rushi, 26, Jackson Center, 24, Lucas Hartle. Give him another one. Two big free throws right there. Lucas Hartle cuts this lead to one, and if you're the Rushi Raiders, you're starting to wonder. Rushi inbounds the ball. It's going to be Zane Chappie. And so Coach Cordonier is going to go ahead and get a timeout, and it's going to be a smart timeout with one minute to go here. It's we're going to be a full timeout too, partner. And we're going to take a full timeout as well. It's the Rushi Raiders 26 and the Jackson Center Tigers 25 on the Ultimate Outdoor Scoreboard. We're coming back with the final with the finale here. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Kettering Fairmont at the Trent Arena. It's the Vision 4 Regional Final. It's the Shelby County Athletic League. It's Rushi. It's Jackson Center. And there's one minute and 17 seconds to go, and there is not one person in their seat tonight. As this game has come down to the conclusion here, Rushi holding on to a slim one-point lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, 26 to 25. Gonna... Let's see what route defensively Jackson Center is going to go with. Grant Elkert's going to put pressure on Braden Monin. Back to Quinter. Oh, he got away with the double dribble. It looks like the officials are going to go ahead and let him get away with it. Now it's Zane Chappie. Well, that's one of those that can be called a fumble also. And we're going to get a foul on Grant Elkert. Elkert was moving his feet. And that's going to take Hayden Quint Quinter to the free throw line with 51 seconds to go. Yeah, and he hasn't shot it very well from the charity strike. The last two, the first one was long and the second one was short. So, you know, you're going to play your percentages. This is a, a guy right now from a mental standpoint to put him at the charity strike. So Hayden Quinter going to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line with 51 seconds to go. And it's going to be a one and one. The winner of this game will play, it appears to be Richmond Heights on the 17th at 8.30 p.m. at UD. And he misses another one. Reed Platfoot comes down with it. And now Jackson Center, for the first time in a long time, has an opportunity to take this lead. Camden Reese controlling things here. He's going to drive the ball. He gets it over to Lucas Hartle. Hartle shoots, misses, balls on the floor. We're going to have a jump ball, it looks like. Here's to be going to Rushi. So a missed shot by Hartle. Had a good look, didn't he? He sure did. Turned the corner, 15-footer, just a little bit too strong. Got the open look, and that's going to put the ball back into Rushi's hands. And boy, you'd think, well, this thing might be over. But I think with 30 seconds to go, Darren, we've got a lot of ball game to go. We do. We're going to see a lot of stop, stop uh, play and free throws. So Rushi's going to go ahead and take a 30-second timeout. We're going to stay here on WOSN. And, you know, one of these things, Darren, that we, we kind of talked about early, but these two teams have played twice. Uh, Rushi won the opener of the season, and then Jackson Center came back. I like what you said earlier. You said, you know, they, they know each other. They, they know, know each other. Yeah, they're friends. They play summer basketball together. You they, know, they go to team functions. Both, place, both teams go to typically the same place. And 
So yeah, it's it's going to come down to who makes the, the big play of the night. And I think that's kind of been a result of, and I don't want to call it ugly offense, but maybe great defense because these teams do know each other so well that they've scouted each other, they've watched each other, they know each other's weaknesses, they know each other's strengths. It's a pretty even game. Absolutely. So with under 30 seconds to go, Rushi going to inbound the basketball. Jackson Center putting on a full court press. And it's Zane Shappy going to get the chance to get the ball in the hole, and he misses. But a rebound by Shappy, and it's going to be a free throw line. That's Hayden Quinter. Got another offensive rebound, and now he's going to get another opportunity from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Yeah, there's no question that his ability on the glass has been the difference right now for Rushi. You know, now let's see, let's see if he can get his composure back together. He's missed his last three. He really looked good stepping up there. Now let's see if we can't see this young man knock him in. So Hayden Quinn are going to get the opportunity here, and he misses his first one. That one makes the second one a little bit tougher, makes that rim appear to be a little bit smaller. So, Coach Cordon here talking to his players, keeping them positive. Hayden Quinter steps back to the free throw line. The Lee's famous recipe chicken, and he misses another one. But what a rebound by Felix Francis. And it looks like we're going to have a foul. There's the length of Felix Francis on the offensive boards. We have talked about him a lot and how he's just came in and made an impact and probably grabbed the biggest rebound of their season. Felix Francis, the six foot five inch guard coming in off the bench and doing an incredible job. Now he's gonna get the opportunity to shoot two from well, the free throw line. And just a stat on Felix Francis. He's had 92 rebounds. 44 of those were offensive and 48 defensive. So he does a really good job and he misses. But Jackson Center is going to get a lane violation, and he's going to get another opportunity here. Jace Molenauer stepped over. Oh, boy. And they're going to give Felix Francis another opportunity here. Now Felix has only shot two coming in. And he nails this one. Felix Francis. Getting a second opportunity from the Lee's famous recipe free throw line to maybe push this lead to three on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard, and he misses. Jace Mullenauer with a nice rebound. He gets it to Nolan Fark. Fark going to bring the ball across half court. Fark setting up, and boy, the Rushi fans wanted a travel, and we're going to get a timeout by Jackson Center. With six That's... minutes to go, or six seconds to go, <laughs> oof. And you know how the officials are. We're going to stay here, stay here, Darren. Officials do not want to blow their whistles with 10 seconds to go no, with a two-point lead. They don't want to be the deciding factor in the basketball game. And I don't blame them. I no. mean, the reality is, is that these two teams have come down this far. They don't want to have to blow their whistle. But in reality, Jackson Center may have got away with one. They got one opportunity here, Darren. So if you're Coach Scott Elkert, you're 26 and one. You're down two. What are you doing here? I think you got to play for two. And if they foul you, you know, being a 75% team from the charity strike versus playing for the win. I could be totally wrong. He may have confidence in his team and say, you know what, guys, if we get the three, let's play for the win. But at shooting 75% from the charity stripe as a team, you got to think they're going to try to go to the basket and create a mismatch and maybe a kick out or a power move inside. One other aspect is Braylon Cordonier, the six foot three sophomore, has fouled out for Rushi. And so maybe the opportunity for overtime could be an advantage for Jackson Center. And you made a great point. If you take the ball to basket, those officials may decide, you know what? It's fair game. You guys are going to make the deciding factor of this game. Let's see what happens, partner. Jackson Center. Gets it to Camden Reese. Reese is going to take the ball to the corner. He gets it to Fark. Fark for the triple misses. Rebound comes down to Rushi. And Rushi's going to hang on to this game. They're going to go to Dayton next week. The Rushi Raiders hang on and snatch this victory from Jackson Center. 
What a game we have saw, Darren Gilbert. Yeah, what a great game by two well-coached teams. Two communities that love athletics, especially basketball. You know, they're going to be well represented. Either team that would have got there from the Shelby County League is going to represent the league and their communities very well. What a dandy it's been. The final from Kettering Fairmont on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. The Rushi Raiders have punched their ticket to Dayton in a state berth next week. 27 to 25 over the Jackson Center Tigers. We'll have more here on the post game show. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Trent Arena where we've witnessed a thriller here in Division 4 where Rushi hangs on to defeat Jackson Center tonight. With me is Coach Spencer Forgardanye and Coach, what an incredible win for your program. You got it's his birth at State next week. How does it feel? Uh, it, it feels pretty darn good. Um, you know, I, right afterwards I said, I don't know how you score seven points in the second <laughs> half and win a regional final, but you know, we knew going in what it was going to be. And I think they did too. Uh, and our kids just, you know, they've been here before, not on this playing field. Less than a year ago, they were fighting for a state championship in baseball. And, you know, I told them before the game, I said, look, look at what was out there on that state finals. Second baseman, shortstop, center fielder, pitcher. Those are our starters tonight. And they know what's going on. They know how to handle this. So, um, didn't do so well in the fourth quarter there, but we just couldn't get shots to go in. Sure. And, it, and we just continued to fight and fight and fight. And that's what these guys are about. You know, this season's been an emotional year. You didn't see yourself in this position that you're in now, but you've done an incredible job. Just tell me about all the emotions that started the season to this point now where, you know, your team gets the, to have this opportunity to compete at state and the community as well. You know, I think Coach Francis and I talked, you know, many, many times. We'd, we'd have went 0 and 23 if it meant bringing our dear friend back. I mean, I, I, I would give anything to have him back. Um, you know, and these guys just continue to fight through a lot of adversity. And, you know, and you know, a, a lot of these guys, 90% of them, it's, that's the closest person they've ever lost to them. You know, they're all still young and their parents are young. So they did an unbelievable job of fighting through that adversity. Uh, they remember him every day. And, you know, his kids are with us. They're with us on the bench. And, you know, it's a couple of his boys. And, you know, Nikki, his wife of seven kids, is very supportive of what we've done. And we're just trying to honor him every day. Certainly have with this uh, appearance at State. Looking at next week, what are the thoughts already? How is the practice schedule going to go? Getting things turned around. What are your thoughts at this I moment? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I gotta I gotta be in Columbus by 11:30 tomorrow for my daughter's AAU tournament. Um, so uh, you know I don't know. We'll get what we've got on Richmond Heights, and you know one thing's for sure. We're gonna come in on Sunday or Monday, whatever it is, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna prepare and we're gonna battle next Friday. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. You deserve that opportunity there, Coach. Congratulations. We're going to go ahead and bring Darren Gilbert back in. And, boy, we just heard from Coach Cordonier. What an incredible win for this team, but not only for the community. Well, first of all, he's a really humble guy. You know, he's fought through so much adversity this year, him and his coaching staff and the players and the community. You know, I, coach, I know Coach Borchers. He's looking down and smiling and having a good time, you know, and, and these kids earned this victory tonight. Hard fought over Jackson Center. You know, like he said, enjoy tonight. He's going to go down, spend time, be a family man with his daughter tomorrow, regroup. The kids are going to be excited. The community is going to be excited. The league should be excited. Two, two quality teams going at it tonight, and they're going to be very well represented, the Shelby County League. And, so they play next Friday, I believe it is, the 17th, uh, the late game. And you know what? Practice, prepare, and, and let them go have a good time. 
What an incredible season for the Rushi Raiders. They get this opportunity to go to state. What an incredible season it's been for us. This is our final time with you during these regional finals. We want to thank our crew tonight. Jacob O'Neill doing a fantastic job running the show for us. Marshall Jordan here running the camera on the floor. And a special thanks to Nick Fraley back at the studio putting this all together. We've appreciated your viewership and appreciated you being with us all season long. For Darren Gerber, I'm John Zerby. We love to have you. Tonight, it's the final. It's the Rushi Raiders 27, the Jackson Center Tigers 25. We're saying good night and so long, everyone.